This is the story of the deadliest energy drink in history. The story starts with a man named Ebenezer Byers. He was a famous American socialite in the 1920s, and he was the son of the industrialist Alexander Byers. So his life was not short of privilege and money. But an accident would soon happen. In 1927, while returning from a football game at Yale, he ended up falling out of an upper bunk on his train and hurt his arm. He had access to top doctors, but despite this, he couldn't get rid of the persistent pain resulting from this fall. That is, until he tried a new energy drink that was all the rage at the time. At the recommendation of a doctor in Pittsburgh, Ebenezer Byers started drinking something named Radithor. This was a patented energy drink-like medicine that was made up of distilled water and just the slightest bit of an element called radium. Byers began to take the drink for his pain, and he began feeling invigorated and full of energy. His pain would fade, and he could not stop raving of this new energy drink that was a miracle cure. The drink was invented by a man named William Bailey, a Harvard dropout who claimed to be a doctor of medicine. He, like many doctors of the time, promoted Radithor as a metabolic stimulant and an aphrodisiac. He went on to claim that the radioactive elements inside stimulated human organs and prevented adrenal fatigue and could cure other things like diabetes, anemia, constipation, and more. Just imagine if that's what Prime or Monster Energy Drinks had written on the can. Radithor, as a medicine and energy drink, came in half-ounce bottles that contained one microcurie of radium-228 and radium-226 each. At the time, it only cost people $30. So, it was pricey, but you could get your hands on one with a little bit of cash. In the end, because buyers loved it so much, he ended up receiving the cure and drinking it, more than three times a day, every day, until he was 50. It was at this age that the effects of drinking radium for more than several decades started to show. He started quickly losing weight, getting severe headaches, and his teeth started falling out. An x-ray specialist based in Manhattan who had treated people for radium poisoning before immediately knew what was wrong. The Federal Trade Commission began investigating Radithor. Although Byers was relatively young at this time, just 50, he could barely speak and was covered in bandages. Prior to his diagnosis, his entire lower jaw had to be removed, and he was only left with two front teeth. All of his tissue was starting to disintegrate, and he was growing holes in his skull. Six months after the investigation started, Byers passed away. An autopsy revealed that his kidneys had failed, and inside of his bones there were 36 micrograms of radium. Of note, just 10 micrograms is considered to be a fatal dose. Byers' death ended up gaining quite a bit of publicity because he was somewhat famous at the time. The media made him to be the poster child of the dangers of radium poisoning, but many across the U.S. and the world continued to believe in the marketing of radium-based medicine. The doctor that actually gave Byers the medicine claimed to have drunk more Radithor than Ebenezer and claimed it had nothing to do with his death. For the most part, though, all of this fell on deaf ears. By December of that year, Radithor ended up being banned in the United States, but no one was ever tried for the death of Ebenezer Byers. So this is the perplexing story of the deadliest energy drink in history to think. Less than 100 years ago, doctors thought that ingesting radioactive isotopes in your drink could cure headaches and, frankly, any disease you'd like. 